Have you ever found yourself with a repetitive task in the query editor, maybe in Excel or Power BI, a list that you need to run a stored procedure for multiple times, or multiple pages on a website that you need to scrape data from? To do this, you can use a query editor function, and this wise out short, we're going to show you how. Query editor functions can come in a massive variety in how you use them and what they do. For this example, we're going to create a simple one that will allow us to go to this website, the Rotten Tomatoes website, and pull data from every single one of their top 100 films by genre. The first thing you have to do when creating a function is create that first query. So I'm going to go into top 100 films, action and adventures, and I'm going to copy the URL because this is where I'm going to pull my data from. In Power BI, I have already extracted all of those names that I'm going to use. You might already have your list of names in an Excel file or in a table if you're planning on doing something like that. Make sure you pay attention to how the URL looks inside of the website in this particular example. So what I've done is I have removed spaces because you may have noticed there's no spaces in there. Their spaces are instead replaced with underscores. I've also got rid of the ampersand symbol. It looks like Rotten Tomatoes just gets rid of it and ignores that it exists. So I'm going to get rid of mine too. Finally, I'm going to make mine all lower case, as this is case sensitive. Now I need that first query. So on the Home tab, I'm going to go to New Source. I'm going to go down to Web. I'm going to paste in my example. If you were running a SQL stored procedure, for example, you would run that the first time with a set value. From here, I'm going to connect to my list of films that I'm interested in. And I'll click OK. If I was trying to make a function now, it wouldn't work. You have to have a parameter in here to create a function. So which bit am I going to parameterize? Well, in my connector, it looks like the link to the website is fairly consistent for each. The only part that's actually changing is this last section, the name of the genre. So I'm going to parameterize that part. I'm going to go to my table 2, I'm going to go to manage parameters, and I'm going to create a new parameter. This is going to be called par genre. I don't need a description because nobody's going to see this. And the current value, the first time it runs, I want it to use this end genre, the part I'm actually going to parameterize. Click OK, and that will create my parameter. Return to the query I want to parameterize. And then you need to make sure you have the ability to parameterize set on. Under File, Options and Settings, Options, you'll see you've got the option for Power Query Editor. And we'll need to make sure that we have parameters, always allow parameterizations turned on. Click OK. And the part I want to parameterize is the source. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to go to the cog next to my source. I could also go into data source settings if I was changing multiple in one go. I'm going to go to advanced. And I'm going to change the ABC at the bottom to parameter. If you don't see the ABC option or 123 option if you're doing a numeric, you need to turn the parameterization on. I'm then going to get rid of the specific genre part at the end. Delete that. And if everything's worked, it should now be returning the website with that genre on at the end. Click OK. Choose my change type. And there we have it. Now, because we have at least one of our queries working with a parameter, I can go to my query, right click, create function. Name my function is going to be called all 
genres. Click OK. And at this point, if you've ever used the Power BI folder connector, this will be looking a little bit familiar. It's going to use the function to take in a list of values, pass each value in via the parameter into our example query and append all the data. If you want to make individual changes, you can actually do it either in the table two, your query that's been parameterized, or after you've imported all the data. Now, all that's left to be done is to actually run the function. Choose your list, go to add columns, and choose invoke custom function. There's no point in giving it a name because I'm planning to bring through multiple columns, but I do need to choose which function I'm going to use. In this case, all genres. Top films is what I'm interested in. So I'm going to click OK. I can now pick and choose which of the columns I want to pull through from the other query. I'd like to bring them all through. I am, however, going to untick use original column name as prefix because otherwise it would have just all genres dot in front of each of these columns. Click OK. And there you have it. All of our genres with all their top 100 films brought through. I can now choose if I want to keep the top films or maybe replace it with something a little bit more useful. And there you have it. The key to creating a function is you have to have a parameter in a query, then a list that you want to pass in. I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any ideas of how you might use this, pop them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next video.